Hello and welcome to a Paladin's Guide to Shadow Priestry. Also, more dots apparently. Because we're dotlicious. Alright, so YouTube videos for Mr. Pandaria seem to have died down a little bit with the release of Diablo 3. However, I will not be focusing that much on the content. Some, perhaps, but not as much as other people because I'm still fully behind WoW. Moving right along, let's talk about some shadowry. Shadow priests. So first and foremost, let's jump into some talents and glyphs. We picked up Siphon for our level 15 talent, which is pretty amazing, and summons this, well, he's not on my bar. Yes, he is. Summons this little guy right here. Which is a really cool model that I have not seen before, so I like it more. He fears someone for 30 seconds, and as you can see, you get a little, little overlay for him. Next is Angelic Feathers. We have seen this before, and it is just pretty awesome. Can't go wrong with feathers. Next, we picked up Archangel. Which gives you dark wings. Just like Red Bull. This causes two various effects. One being dark evangelism. Or, excuse me, one using dark evangelism. Which is dark archangel. Which increases damage done by your mind flay, mind spike, mind blast, and shadow or death by 25% for 18 seconds. With this 90 second cooldown. Sad face, it has a long cooldown. But that's okay. Next, we go to our level 60 ability, which is Spectral Geist. This gives you the ability to be able to keep something in combat, but save yourself from getting hurt in the form that you can do this. Of course, this target's not trying to kill me, but you can just imagine I cast that, move over here, pop a heal on myself. And then the target will come after me. This is something that I would feel that rogues should have. Especially subtlety. But, you know. I think it should even be really dorky. And it should make it look like this guy. But that's just totally off topic. And last but not least, we have power infusion. Because we need another cooldown. This one, however, infuses the target with the power to increase spell casting speed by 20%. And reduces the mana cost of all spells by 20% by 15 seconds. It's pretty much a mini bloodlust for you. This is currently what Disc Priest have on live, but now you can have it at any. I do not feel that Twist of Faith is good enough to pick up because once a target gets to 20% while leveling, it usually just dies. And while Divine Insight is pretty nice looking, again, things just don't seem to live long enough for it to be that important. Moving right along, let's go to Glyphs. Now, sadly, I don't have currently the ability to get these three Glyphs, so my choices are a little bit more limited, but I do believe that in my honest opinion, I've picked the ones that I like the most, except maybe adding Glyph of Mind Blast. Personal preference though, I don't have it. So let's move right along. Glyph of Dispersion. Reduces the cooldown of dispersion by 15 seconds. We will get more into what dispersion is, but it does this, which just looks cool, and it reduces damage. But we'll get more into that in a minute, as I said. Glyph of Dark Binding is the next glyph, which allows you to cast Prayer of Mending, Renew, and Leap of Faith without canceling Shadow Form. This is good for group utility, and along with the ability to toss Renew on yourself, along with your shield in order to keep yourself up and alive while leveling quicker with less downtime. Next we picked up Mind Spike. When you deal damage with your Mind Spike, the cast time of your next Mind Blast is reduced by 50%, lasting 6 seconds. This effect stacks, with, uh, stacks up to 2 times. So to give you the example, 1, 2, 3. Kind of just a, you know. And you can see the damage. I'm not testing it, so I don't know. However, that hit for 39k, which is pretty damn nice. 
Now then, I guess we will go straight into abilities since we have this full. Devouring Plague has been altered. It was removed and now has been brought back. It now consumes all shadow orbs on a target. And when it does, it deals X amount of damage as shadow and afflicts a disease on the target that causes a smaller... Pretty much, it looks like it's about 10% of the damage over... The wording of this, I think, is incorrect, but... We'll just have to go with what they say for now. It causes about 2,000 shadow damage every 4.69 seconds for 6.31 6 seconds. 30% 30 of, 30 of the damage caused by Devouring Plague kills the caster. Damage increased based on the number of shadow orbs. However, if you watch the ability, and I'll try to hover over this quick enough, you'll be able to see that this tooltip is currently wrong. As you can see, the damage ticking is steady, and it's about every second. So it's more like it causes that amount of damage every second for 6.31 seconds, based on haste, of course. So let's move right along. Mind Spike. I don't know if this ability has changed any since live, because I don't really play Shadow Priest. I play Disc Priest. But here's what it does. You blast the target for... X amount of shadow frost damage, but extinguish all your shadow damaging damage over time effects on the target in the process. Mind Spike also increases the critical strike chance of your next mind blast on a target by 30%, stacking up to three times. Again, as you can see, the buffs up here. Actually, it doesn't show it. Anyway, basically, it makes it an instant crit. Which is really nice, because it's an instant crit. And it's an instant cast. Moving right along. Mind Blast. Now, generates one Shadow Orb, and causes a large amount of damage. It's on about an 8 second cooldown. I believe this is affected by haste. I think a lot of things are affected by haste now, which is pretty neat. Mind Flight is the same as before. I do remember this one. I do not believe there's been any changes to it. Shadow Warp Pain it also works pretty much... Actually... Hmm... Shadow Warp Pain seems to, I believe, work more like Devouring Plague used to, except without the heal. It causes initial damage and then causes damage over time. It also causes your Shadow Apparitions, but we'll get into that in a second. Shadow Word Death has been altered slightly in the fact that if the target is below 20% health, the target takes 44 times as much damage, and the cooldown is reset if the target does not die. These were glyphs originally. This reset cannot occur more than every 6 seconds. If the target dies, the caster takes no damage. It also grants a Shadow Orb if the person is below 20% health. Now then, this moving on to Vampiric Touch, which is basically the same as before. Then you have your Dispersion, and then you have your Vampiric Embrace, which is now a 3 minute cooldown that fills you with the Embrace of Shadowy Energy, causing you and allies to be healed for 50% of any single target Shadow spell you deal, evenly split, split between them. Hmm, so let's test. See, it does last 15 seconds, so we can go ahead and pop it. Do we get to see some healing? One. It's probably because I'm taking no damage. Oh, yeah. And Shadow Seer, Mind Seer is basically the same as well. Psychic Horror is not quite so good, in my opinion. It consumes all your shadow orbs to terrify the target, causing them to tremble in, tremble in horror for one second plus one second per shadow orb consumed, and to drop their weapon and shield for ten seconds. So at a max, you can get four seconds on this. It does not seem worth the additional. It it just it doesn't seem worth it. Personal preference, I'm sure. You can obviously cast Leap of Faith wall. In shadow form, and your shadow fiend is got a little bit of change as well. Let's go back here. 
So it does its normal attacking and giving you mana back, but your Mind Flay critical strikes reduce the remaining cooldown of this ability by 10 seconds. So let's pop it. Go, Shadow Fiend, go! And then if we... Get oh, I was targeting the Shadow Fiend. So we target that, you can see... Every now and then it'll decrease it. And you actually get a little toolbar this time. So that's interesting. They took toolbars away from some, but gave it to others. Sadly, you no longer have that move. So let's go ahead and move on to a few other little things real quick. And then we will wrap up this video. So you have the baseline of all priests pretty much have the baseline that reduces the pushback by 70%. I think all casters have that. Your mastery is shadowy recall. It gives your periodic spell damage spells a 15 point, well, an X amount of chance to deal damage twice each time they deal damage. I'm wondering if that puts them on separate crits or if that puts them on if it crits then that one crits. Some people might say well that doesn't matter but it actually does. Maybe. Maybe not a lot. Maybe not as much as I'm thinking it does. So Mr. Mysticism, that thing, increases intellect by 5%. Shadow orbs generate by mind blasts and are used to cast Devouring Plague and empower your psychic horror. Kind of sad that that's all it does. Like, there's not a whole lot there. It's not very meaty. Spiritual Precision grants hit equal to your spirit gain from items and or effects. Same as before. Still good. Um, I actually, on this character, switched over to these the actual shadow gear they give you. And don't have near as much hit as I had in my healing gear. But I don't have as much mastery either, so it equals out. And then last but not least, shadowy apparitions. When you're... When you deal periodic damage with your Shadow Ward Pain, you have a 20% chance to summon a shadowy version of yourself, which slowly moves toward the target and blows up. Durka durka. Once it reaches the target, it causes X amount of damage. You can only have three shadowy apparitions active at a time. Sadly, there is no mention that you can still run around like an idiot, which was great, with it up and it increasing your chance for them to come out kind of hope that's something that's added because it was always a little fun and then sadly I don't have it to show you but void shift I believe this was originally a talent but now it's an, a baseline ability you and your current target party or raid member swap health percentages increasing the lower percentage of the two to 25% if below that amount so if your tank's about to die, you have full health, you can swap health with them and save their life, basically. I mean, that's, that's, that's the gist of it. And we can't go over these, but we will later on. Anyways, I would like to thank you for watching and encourage you to have a wonderful day. I'm not going to shamelessly... I'm not going to shamelessly promote myself today. Goodbye, guys.